Good morning, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to On the Bench with Big Jim. It has been a little, uh, a little while since we've had a show. Um, life's been very busy for me, and uh, it's been terrific. Uh, and uh, we'll get to that, but uh, we're going to start the show off by bringing in our guest. Um, Zeb Miller is out of uh, uh, Ohio. And uh, I'm trying to bring him in here. Let's see him bring him on camera. There we go. Zeb, Zeb Miller. Jim, uh, how are you doing, Zeb? I'm awesome, man. How about yourself? I'm doing really good. And uh, I see you're uh, you're busy. Did did you get your kids home from swim lessons? Yeah. Now I'm picking up uh, salt for the. Uh, I'm picking up salt for the uh, uh, softener at home because we have a well. Okay. Doing, doing, I'm mowing the lawn, doing all types of stuff, man. So we're we're just out and about doing things and doing dad stuff, doing husband stuff, doing. You know, productive human things, I guess. I, I don't well, know. I got a mobile well, on yet, too. <laughs> because you were gone all week at the, the Northwest Elite Wrestling Camp. Yeah, with, with uh, Coach Kevin Roberts. And, uh, man, they, they, uh, they're they awesome hosts, the Roberts family over there in Spokane okay. Valley. And, uh, yeah, I just I like going out there, heading out to the Pacific Northwest and seeing the people. The people are super friendly. And I just, yeah, I really enjoy being there. I, you know, running to someone like you, Jim, I uh, – really reminds me of what I like to do with the sport of wrestling. And that's like talk to people, engage people, hear their stories. And um, had it not been for Kevin opening his mouth, I'd have never known you were a uh, division one, all American at BYU. Not that <laughs> that's your, your identity as a person at all, but um, that I like cool stuff like that, man. Well, I'm, I'm Real glad cool that uh, I'm glad that Kevin, uh, I brought that out. That way we could uh, we we were able to visit, and uh, you actually got to interview me, and now it's my turn to interview you. So yeah. So <laughs> my thing is, if you'd have been a Joe bag of donuts, just like I was in college, we probably still would have done an interview. Just just an FYI, right. if you'd have just been a slightly over five hundred Division One college wrestlers like I was, I'm sure uh, we probably still would have made a connection there. But yeah. So now I'm just uh, getting ready. I'm here here at the store doing stuff so i'm gonna actually catch some shade under here under this tree and Not sit and talk to you man and, and see what's awesome. going on but uh what's going on today um uh, today is friday and uh i wanted to be able to uh get get through the weekend without feeling guilty about having not done a show in two weeks um but after having met you at the camp i was like man this guy has so much to give to wrestling and it does give so much to wrestling that uh um, I thought it would be great to turn the table on you um, because you typically are the one doing the interviews. I thought it would be uh, interesting and fun to have people uh, in your world and in the world of wrestling get to know Zeb Miller a little bit more. Um, and so if you're, uh, if you're willing to uh, 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 divulge uh, all of your secrets, let's, let's find out a little bit about... Uh, what Zeb Miller is all about. Uh, first off, I mean, you're a big Ohio guy. Uh, you're, you're born and raised, and uh, di- you're diehard Ohio. Uh, your, your, your business website is uh, GoHioCasts. Is that how you say it? Yeah, GoHioCast. Uh, yeah, GoHioCast, the YouTube channel is where we've kind of manifested all the, uh, the content is bumped over to the YouTube channel, and then we do a website as well, but not so much as heavy on the website as we are on the YouTube channel right now. And then obviously channel. we, we lend a lot of things to flow wrestling whenever we're, whenever we're able to work with them and, and, uh, yeah, really, really make connections with them. And yeah, that's kind of like the, the bigger affiliate, the big brother of it would be flow wrestling who I started out with and still doing a probably like I do Iron Man, I do NCAA tournament with them. Uh, I just did the, uh, U 23s, uh, university, what formerly known as University Nationals, and then UWW Cadets. So I'd still do a fair amount of events with them, not as much as I used to. Like I was telling you, 
Jim, the start of GoHioCast was with the EWL, the Eastern Wrestling right. League, which is just merged with the Mid American Conference. So Edinburgh, uh, Lock Haven, Bloomsburg, Clarion, um, and the original members on either Cleveland State, and then um, WVU and um, Pitt were in the league now, and WVU obviously went to the Big Twelve, and Pitt to the ACC. So they picked up uh, George Mason and Ryder, and then I was after that deal was done. We had a two-year contract. They didn't renew for a third, and Pitt left, and, you know, like those teams left, and then they had to pick up some affiliate members. And um, so that's how Ohio Cast even started. Martin Floriani, we made a deal with – I had a business partner, Jared Opfer, who since has left our company, who I still do a lot of business with, but um, he was a college teammate of mine. And uh, that was kind of how Ohio Cast started. And they were trying to make affiliate websites. And if you've looked at the history of Flow Wrestling, you know, it used to be like the YouTube – now everything is to a streaming model. Everything streaming events is how they do right. their uh, their revenue, right? So it's a subscription mm -hmm. fee to them. So my stuff's all free, though. You know, I, I work with uh, Defense Soap, Guy Seiko. I work with Schmidt's oh, Corner let, Rugs. Let, let, me, let, let me do a little plug there for you. <laughs> ah, Defense Soap. Defense yeah. what you build. Yeah. Defense what you build. So. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, awesome. Yeah, and, and Guy Seiko and Gus Seiko, his son, Charlie Agazzino, they're, those guys are awesome. So I work with them. They make a lot of this stuff possible now, things where I'm not working with Flo, where Flo's not, you know, picking the bell up. Um, uh, and also Barbarian Apparel. I don't know if you noticed that. I was giving stuff away. Yeah, I saw, the, I, I, yeah. I saw that interview with the coach that, uh, that, that had the Barbarian Wrestling sweatshirt on. That was a nice sweatshirt. Yeah, Hoquam. Hoquam out there yeah. in the Olympic yeah. Peninsula out there in uh, – on the West Coast. He said they're about 20 feet above sea level. I said, do you practice your tsunami <laughs> drills? He said, yeah, we have them about three, four times a year. Uh, uh, yeah. So, oh, and then um, Schmitty's Corner Rugs, uh, a guy named Mike Smith out of Steubenville, Ohio. You should see the facility. This guy just, he re, uh, he bought an old Christian community center and re did everything. The oh, gym, no. the floor. I saw, I saw the, I saw the, the sportatorium. Yeah. yeah. So I work with Schmitty and th those three individuals. And then the Ohio athletic committee, which is my, uh, business partner, old business partner, former business partner and college teammate, Jared Opfer. So those are the real big four who really keep me afloat to be able to do this. Um, and I'm a full-time teacher. So I teach full-time at Riverside high school in Painesville township. So that that's kind of you know my background with the business end of things, and then you were we were talking earlier, and you said, well, where are you from, right? Yeah. From I'm from the Toledo, Ohio Toledo. area, and, and and for you who wrestled in an Olympic trial, and was a, a senior level ladder athlete, well, you'd know Toledo is was the home of the World Cup for forever, right? Well, that's where that's where our world. Uh, no, no, we were in Topeka. I'm sorry. Um, you know, but Toledo is known for its wrestling, and uh, so you you were able to grow up around a lot of high level wrestling. Well, of course, Greg Wojciechowski, the great Wojo, yeah. as you would know, he lost in the NC, he's just NCAA champion for Toledo, and then he lost to Chris Taylor in the NCAA finals. Um, great Wojo, you know that that's something I that, that was the guy I grew up looking up to, right? And then he did like a regional circuit of. Uh, WWE t style wrestling, <laughs> really, really, yeah. really nice, humble guy. Works with the uh, the youth of uh, of Toledo, Ohio, still a lot. You know, he t t taught and coached at Bowser High School in Toledo, and then um, obviously Toledo dropped wrestling in like '92. I want to say 1992. Um, had had an excellent program. They, I still think I don't know if Central Michigan's caught him yet. But I still think they have the most All-Americans in the Mid-American Conference in Division oh, One. Yeah. That makes me so sad to think about it. What we'll changed the course of my life, I can tell you that much, Jim, because I probably would not have gone to Kent State and wrestled because my mom and dad live 18 miles from downtown Toledo. So, uh, you know, my best friend you, who you lives in Portland. Yeah, I'd have stayed. My best friend who lives in Portland, Oregon, he works for Portland General Electric. He's got an engineering degree from University of Toledo. My sister's a University of Toledo grad. Um, I got uh, so my brother-in-law who passed away. He was an electrical engineer from the University of Toledo. They have a really good engineering school. If you don't know, they're they're comparable to like a Purdue. 
a really good awesome. engineering school, Toledo is. So when they dropped their program in the early 90s, I'm a 1998 graduate of high school, I would have gone to Toledo. And, you know, obviously it wasn't a thought because I didn't have a program and I wouldn't have gone there. And probably wasn't a Division One guy. I was fifth in Ohio in Division Two once. But I went to Kent State and was a starter all four years. Um, and, um, you know, I was, I was 60 and 58. Lost a true second place match to qualify for the NCAs to the Central Michigan guy, uh, and uh, never got to qualify for the NCAA tournament. How many tournaments did you qualify for, Jim? I wrestled in three. You wrestled in three, all for yeah. BYU. No, uh, two for Idaho State, and then when they dropped the program, I transferred to BYU. How did you do it? I know you're an All-American at BYU. You're seventh for BYU. Um, uh, how did you do one for? Match. My sophomore year at Idaho State, I uh, was one match away. You lost in the blood round? I both times. Oh, my and, gosh. Uh, and, uh, and then my, uh, my junior year, my last year at Idaho State, I was seated seventh. And Rocco Liace dislocated my shoulder in our match from Arizona State. I don't know if you remember that name. It had a special name. It's easy to remember. Rocco yeah. Liace. But uh, – he did an arm spin and dislocated my shoulder, and I like a Japanese wizard underarm spin. I uh, did the underarm, yeah, just a. Uh, he was a little guy, a little heavyweight, and uh, yeah, we tied up, and he tried to do a spin on my arm, and it came out. It's the same shoulder I hurt my senior year in high school, and um, but uh, it uh, you know it, it's what it's part of it's part of the sport. You get hurt, and. Uh, but it just gave me that little more incentive my senior year to get to get yeah. to, to, to get to the podium. But when you, um, I can laugh about it now because you took seventh as a senior. Let's just put it that way, right? <laughs> right, right, right. So, but 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 this is. A, I want to know about you. Uh, you. You got to interview me last week or earlier in this week. It was. It was earlier this week. Today's Friday. We met yeah, on Monday. Tuesday? We, Monday, Tuesday, we on, yeah. We met on Sunday. We met on Sunday, and then, and then uh, we, we visited on Monday. And I, I really appreciate the opportunity to, to, uh, to talk. I don't know, talk about myself. But um, it, was, it was neat meeting you. And it was interesting as I was sitting there, and I was listening to you to talk to Dustin uh, Schlater. I was like, I know that voice. I, that's, and, I, and then I remembered Kevin uh, talk highly about you and how, what a good friend you are. And I was like, Oh man, he's got Zeb Miller out here at camp because your voice is distinctive, and I'd never. It's like you'd said you you have a face for radio, and so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, well, no, you just don't see, see me much. You hear me a lot. You don't see me much. Yeah, you 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 made that same joke that I did when I had my sports talk show. Uh, because being on the radio, it doesn't matter what you look like; it's it's how you sound. But anyway, um. I was like, I know that voice, and and then we we ended up uh, introducing ourselves to each other, and and uh, it's like we've been friends for a long, long time. This is a this is a cool thing. But, I think that's what the sport does, though. I think that you yes. feel like this common camaraderie and, and bonding, and like everybody says, it's a brotherhood. It, it, I, like they're not wrong. It's totally a brotherhood, and it's like you know when you meet a wrestler and you meet a different. Yep. It's like you just yeah, you, you really have a bond with people and. Like, I've had the tar kicked out of me, as I'm sure you have. And, you know, you get, like, a mutual respect. Yeah, mutual respect for people. And it's really cool. And it's easy to communicate with a lot of people whenever it's, like, wrestling people. We stick together, right? It is. So, uh, now, you were were telling me earlier, give uh, our listeners a little bit of idea. You had a couple. You have five brothers? or No, I'm the youngest of five. I'm the youngest of five. I got three brothers and a sister. And all, were, were all three of your brothers state champions? or All three of my brothers are state champion. Uh, and then my nephew, Ian, the assistant coach at Oregon State, he was a state champ was as a state junior and then runner-up well. as a senior. And, um, yeah, he was a three-time All-American at Kent State. And none of my brothers were All-Americans. I've won more college matches than all of them combined. Um, oh, wow. But, I mean, wh- wh- whatever, right? Um, but, like, uh, the thing with that, yeah, I took fifth in the state as a senior and I was the last brother. And, uh, no, like my family, my dad never put any pressure on me. He was a really good guy. My dad was an iron worker for 52 years. Uh, 
Side note, my dad came out of retirement because his contract wow. said when he turned 70, he could. He's out of his mind. But anyhow, he did iron work for 52 years. My grandfather, wow. my papa, Papa Ferd, Ferd Miller. My pop, I have a Ferd Miller, too. You met earlier, a little boy, right, the three-year-old? Yeah. And then I have a brother Ferd, my brother Ferd and my great-grandfather's Ferd, okay? Papa Ferd was one of ten kids, nine girls and him. Oh, wow. Okay? And then he fought in every major battlefront in World War II. Oh, that's he cool. was in uh, North Africa, Sicily, Italy, um, the D-Day invasions, and the support for it thereafter. And wow. then um, he was in Guam in the Philippines. And, and being an only boy, he had to enlist because he had a waiver. Oh, they, he had a def yeah, they, deferment. Yeah, they wouldn't draft him. They wouldn't because draft he was the last, he was only, he was the he was last the boy. boy. Yeah. He had less living uh -huh. male. So that's yeah. a real thing. I thought that was always like a movie Hollywood thing. That's actually a real thing if you didn't know that. It is. Yeah. Real well, thing. My, um, my, but my, my, my dad and his three brothers fought in World War II. And yeah. uh, that, there's a big, I have a big article about how they talked about the family and, and how, because uh, it was, the, that was all the boys. And he had like seven or eight brothers and sisters. And um, all of the, all of the boys uh, went, went to World War II. It was kind of crazy. Did thing. they all come back? Did they all come yeah, back? Yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Well, that's yeah, awesome. I, I really yeah. like its story now. It's a really good story yeah. now. It isn't like when Jim did an All-American for Idaho State <laughs> and we can laugh about it, and then he took seven for, for BYU. It, you know, that's a good story that they all come back. But, but yeah, so, like, I just come from blue-collar people, pretty gritty people. I, oddly enough, don't do it. It's funny. They, they would tell you I'm a slug because, I you know, maybe they would say I got dish, dish pan hands, but, you know, I teach. I teach, I own some rental properties, and then I do the videos and the content creation, influencing. Um, but I, you know, like I try and actually do work. Like today I'll mow the lawn, sure. whack the weeds. I split wood. I cut a lot of wood. I live on five acres and four of its woods. So awesome. actually we have the ash tree, ash bore thing. I've been, I've been cutting some of those down recently and doing the firewood. So I burn all winter. Not for oh, heat. Cool. For for ambiance, I think for sure. no. for the environment. My wife really likes it. She's a fan. She likes likes the burning. And she's from she's from uh, Ann Arbor, Michigan. You know, they never had a fireplace or anything. You, you married so, a girl um, from Michigan, huh? <laughs> I married an Ann Arbor girl. Yeah, wow. yeah, my my wife's high school is about 150 yards from the big house. Oh wow! If you like, you went onto Google Maps right now, you'd be like, oh yeah, he wasn't joking. She went to so Pioneer High School. How, how, uh, house divided during that week. Um, I don't care about that. I don't. I'm not a. <laughs> no, I don't care about oh, that. Oh, okay. I was born and raised in the Toledo area, and it's a 50/50 50 so, area. Oh, okay. Because Toledo's only 45 minutes from oh, Ann Arbor, okay. and over it's about two hours from uh, Columbus. So you'd be surprised how divided it is. Like it's oh. it's half Michigan, half Ohio State, where I'm from. Right. It would okay. really blow your mind. Yeah, and then but, but, you, but my brother's yeah, wrestled brother. there. You had two that brothers wrestled there. Wrestled Ohio State, so I mean, you have some allegiance to Ohio State, yeah. Sure, yeah. I mean, yeah, but like, I have some allegiance to Michigan too, don't I? Oh, Where do you I think I spend all my holidays? Where do you think I spend all my holidays? Oh, sure, with your with Ann your Arbor, yeah, yeah, sure right, in Ann Arbor. So, but yeah, like the, it, it's yeah. The back to your original point, as far as background, sure, I'm an Ohio guy, but there, I I like what Michigan's doing. There's no question. Oh, sure. Oh, I love I love Bournemouth. Cliff and, Keen uh, Wrestling Club and all those guys, yeah. and they're all really yeah. easy to deal with. And uh, Dave Boyard, the assistant, um, the the volunteer assistant, he's from Ohio. Dave Boyard's a uh, okay. Dave Boyard's a state runner up in Ohio. I don't think he ever won the state title. He was an All American in Central Michigan. So there's connections there, and I like all. I like yeah. Bournemouth's a good good guy. He's a great uh, guy. Torella. And it's, exactly. I've been, I, I do a lot of work with them too, so they're awesome. On, on all the trips that I took, uh, I have a Michigan wrestling shirt from Sean, and uh, he sent me one after a trip that we did together. And uh, no, good, good people. And I'm so glad that he got that job. Uh, yeah, Sean's a perfect, good dude. He was a perfect fit for to take that over. Well, you so. got to be a Michigan man, I think, man. Oh, you do. No, you know, no Joe question. McFarland's from North Olmsted. Joe, Joe McFarland's from. Oh. So listen to this. They're all from the same neighborhood, Joe McFarlane and the Heffernans. All from the same neighborhood. But the Heffernans, Coach Heffernan at Illinois, and then now yeah. the new head coach at St. Edward, John, 
who they were national. One was a national champ for Iowa, Coach Gable, and the other one was an All American. They're from the same neighborhood as Joe McFarland. Wow. Northeast Ohio wow. has really got a rich tradition. Wow. It's, it it would blow your it mind. Re- it really, it does. really does. Yeah, yeah and I know Spokane. Have. I was really impressed with Spokane. Some of the people they have there. Oh well, uh, yeah, we you know kind of hidden just because we don't have any college wrestling, so there's really no news about uh, college wrestling in in Washington State. And that's kind of a sad, sad commentary on. Yeah, it's a bummer. Um, Total bummer. Yeah, it is a bummer. So, um, now. Do you what's your first what's your first vivid memory of wrestling? So we would go to Cardinal Stritch, East Toledo. Well, it's Oregon, Ohio, but East Toledo essentially. And they used to take us to the uh, dual meets, Oak Harbor, where I'm from. Not to be confused from like the beautiful Oak Harbor, Washington, Oak Harbor, mm-hmm. Ohio, right on the the shores of Lake Erie. Um, we would go watch Cardinal Stritch, and they would. We went to their youth club, okay, and then the Bergmans. So the Bergman family, um, they were our coaches. They were our high school coaches, and then they were my junior high coach, and then they coached all of us in high school. So you know who J.D. Bergman is? The, uh, yeah, I, yeah. I, I've never met J.D., but I know of him. He's a, so he's we're from the same wrestler. hometown. We're oh, from the same. Cool. Well, they're actually from Genoa, um, the Bergmans are, and then George Bergman and Joe Bergman, they're – there's 14 of them. There's 14, eight boys, six girls. Yeah, when the, they'll be two, after nuclear uh, nuclear war, they'll be Bergmans, Twinkies, Bergman. and cockroaches. <laughs> There's a lot of them, right? So, so we would go to stuff, and the Bergmans were always at stuff. I remember the Bergmans, the Joe, Jim, John, George, and like we would go to use stuff. And they would be at things, running things. So I remember the Bergmans all the time. But I remember we had a youth wrestling at Cardinal Stritch. And they were on a stage. I remember being up on a stage. And then I remember um, my brother Ferd was a state qualifier for Genoa. And then, like, some, some things happened. And we moved across the street to O'Carver where Joe Bergman was the coach. So my first real vivid memories were just going to the youth stuff at Cardinal Stritch, Genoa. Oak Harbor, the, you know, the high schools that we live around. The area has not changed where I'm from. It's like frozen in time. Same, My best friend same. that lives, yeah, it's, it has not changed. Like, they don't develop stuff. It's crazy. Like, and maybe a new neighborhood every now and again, but, like, actually, the elementary school where all my brothers and sisters went, it's not there anymore. Allen, oh. Allen Central, which is, like, in Genoa, it's gone. It's a, it's a field now. So it changed in that sense, I guess. But um, I just remember going to all the stuff at Cardinal Stritch, you know, and Oak Harbor. That would be – and in the World Cups. I mean, how can I forget that? Right. Because right? they had but been I don't, there a lot. Yeah. In Toledo, yeah, at Savage Hall. But I don't know if I kind of grasped the gravity of it, um, who the guys really were in the, the level it was now that I you know, work in the media end of it. Like at Vegas Worlds in 2015 – that was the level of wrestling I was I was watching as a child. You know what I mean? You know, I saw John Smith lose. I brought that up to him in an interview, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, well, you know, I wasn't ready, and my brother <laughs> made me do it." And he was real cool about it, but he signed all our autographs as him and his brother argued back and forth. Um, it, it was <laughs> Leroy and Leroy and him were like going at it, and he signed all our autographs so for, through entirety. Him and his brother screaming at each other. John Smith signed all our autographs. So. I remember that, you know, that's just like vivid stuff. Saw Mark Schultz lose in Toledo. That's crazy. crazy. You know, just crazy things you think about. Like, I was a kid, though. You know what I mean? Now it's like, I'm sure uh, if you know who Willie Saylor is for Flow Wrestling, Willie's yes. from the Lehigh Valley. So he's probably okay. grew up watching wrestling like I did. You know, he was watching Jack Kubo as a little kid win NCAA titles. So Willie probably has a similar gauge on historical wrestling as i do as far as watching it you know yeah. i remember the great great wojo would be wrestling it was awesome i was a little boy and he was still wrestling it was crazy so i mean those would be yeah those are the the, the most vivid memories right and my brother tate kicking the tar out of me my brother tate, I, I, well, I would ima- I imagine all your older brothers uh kind of put a thumping on the little little brother growing up uh, i mean my brother Ferd's 10 years older than me probably could have killed me 
And then my brother Chad, he he left me alone largely. But my brother Tate, who's two years older than me, man, he really put it on me. He was pretty unmerciful, but I'm not mad at him. But well, you guys, yeah, you guys are in the same wrestling room, uh, high school teammates then. Yeah, listen, with the, the Oak Harbor wrestling room used to open up into the the varsity gym, and then they they added on to the school. It's a nuclear power plant school, so they get the revenue from a nuclear power plant. Okay. So one day. Um, we got into it in the wrestling room, and it had the, the doors with the handle you push like that. Yeah. And uh, we started fighting in the wrestling room, and uh, <laughs> he got me on skates. He had me by the neck, like, running me, and I was, you know, keeping my feet. Backpedal. Yeah. Backpedaling, and he ran me into the gym, and the, the basketball team was having a scrimmage. And we exploded onto the floor, and it was like coaches flying everywhere. I punched him in the face. We're punching each other, and the <laughs> basketball coach is on him. He's punching the basketball coach. George Bergman's on my back. And the basketball coach, it was awesome. It was actually really cool. His, name's, uh, his name is uh, uh, Steve Keller, really good friend of mine. The family's really good friends of mine. And I remember he's, he's screaming. And I remember he's blowing the whistle, screaming. He's on top of my brother Tate. And I remember he's like, doo, doo, you know, blowing the whistle. And he's like, <laughs> and he like, get, they get us calmed down. They drag us back into the wrestling room. And he's like, you see that? That's the kind of intensity I want to see out here. <laughs> I was like, yeah, he's nuts, but I loved it. Oh, oh, he yelled that at the basketball kids. He yelled that, that at his awesome. guys. He's like, that's, that's awesome. what I want to see out here. You want to win that's like awesome. those two want to win. You want to scrap that's, like them. That, that's, this that's is how awesome. you get it done. That's and I classic. can't, like, now they'd expelled both my brother and I. I think he might have punched <laughs> right. the coach. And, you know what I mean? Like, it's just a different, we're in a different you know that it's we a different do. society. We, largely, we do is, live right? in a we do live in a different world now. That's so, how it um, is, man. <laughs> so, um, your your sister, your sister's older than you. How, yeah. Did she treat Did she treat you kindly? My sister was the best sister you could ever imagine. Um, yeah. She was awesome. I got a really good sister. Like my sister videoed all of our stuff. Oh, cool. She she was the kindest, nicest person. Um. She, yeah, and I don't think, you know what I mean? I, I don't know, like, how much, uh, you know, that's hard, being a girl in a wrestling family. And, uh, yeah, she was awesome. She was really an awesome big sister, to answer your question. And now her son's an athletic trainer at uh, Ohio University. He's trying to get it. He, he actually did a trip last year with, with Joel Greenlee and the wrestling team. Awesome. And he was football last year. He's a great he's a great kid. And, yeah, yeah. Um, her husband passed away in 2010 in an accident in Oak Harbor in our hometown in the river. And, um, oh, yeah, she, she's a guidance. That. Yeah. She's a guidance counselor at uh, Margareta high school in our, and it's in our conference, but yeah, you want to talk about, she was the best. I, yeah. I couldn't think of a better, probably my best <laughs> treated me the best at all my siblings growing up. Right. I mean, but yeah, she's in education. And then my brother, Chad, they're kind of the ones that really got me into wanting to be a teacher. So, yeah, I owe a lot to them, you know what I mean? Like, because um, I don't think a lot of people get it, like, someday wrestling will end. Well, obviously, oh, you know. It's, sure. Yeah, you, you know, like, I like Drew Roberts. I was with Drew Roberts this week. Yeah. And I don't know if Drew Roberts understands this isn't going to be here in a decade maybe, right? Might not be here, in, but he's a kid. It's not like Drew Roberts. I think every kid's like that. But just as an example, right? You know, like, kids don't understand that, you have to use wrestling to advance your career. Jim, you didn't just go to Idaho oh, no State question. and BYU to be a meathead, did you? No. Your no, life, your life wasn't over when you got cut from the Falcons, was it? Uh, it wasn't. It, uh, you I get my lot, point, right? I, like, I, I, oh sure. Yeah, there's more. There's more to. There's more to the sport because there's so many other aspects in your life that yeah. uh, that you can have. Um, yeah. You know, it, it, you you brought up Drew Roberts and uh, uh, Dustin and no 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 yeah uh, no uh, Ashnell and I had a really good conversation about uh, about uh, Drew and and uh, he was excited to see where that kid was going to be in about five or six years because he's right on the precipice of being one of those great uh, high school kids that that uh, continues on. He's going to be wrestling uh, this this week. Well, next week at uh, Fargo, and 
uh, representing himself, his family, and you know the state of Washington. But um, he, he, someday, you know, and he's smart. He's smart. He's got a great mom and a great he's, dad. He's a, I, okay. So just he's a bad example. <laughs> most <laughs> no, no, kids, no, that's true. <laughs> most kids don't understand that wrestling will end someday. Drew obviously gets it more than anybody else, but he's, the thing with him is his time. dad. His dad did twenty plus years in coaching. Yeah. So, like, it's a possibility for Drew Roberts to be on a coaching staff in D1. Most kids aren't going to be like him, though. Most That's kids true. aren't, no. you know, they're going to be like me. They're going to have to get an education or they're going to have to work or they're going to have to get into a trade, right? But Drew's going to be able to do whatever he wants. because he's He'll he's be able to do whatever he wants. He's, he's a bad example. Yeah. Sure. <laughs> he's a bad example. You but, know what I mean, though. Like, most no, people, I, like, I do. my I do. talent level, most of the kids yeah. are at the camp this week, you know, the Northwest Elite Camp at, Right. In, uh, at Eastern Washington, they're going to have to use wrestling like I've used wrestling or my brother yeah. Chad used wrestling or how my nephew Ian's used wrestling. Like, you get a degree and then and go some, uh, you, you go, get, you teach, and you do own a business, you, you do yeah. something productive. Like my business partner, Jared Opfer, he's a great example, right? He was a four-time state champ, never was an All-American in college, but, man, he runs the best – Athletic Association in Ohio, in my opinion. So, but yeah, most people have to use it to do something. Now, there's nothing wrong with the trades either, right? My brother Ferd actually runs the Iron Worker Safety Trades at Local oh, cool. 55 in um, Toledo, Ohio. So, getting into the trades is is not not bad. I mean, I was raised by a tradesman. I was raised by a journeyman iron worker. He was raised by a journeyman iron worker. So it's like all my uncles are pipe fitters. You know what I mean? Like. Yeah, hey, my best friend's that... dad was a millwright at the Jeep plant in Toledo, right, where they make the Jeep Wrangler. So it's like the trades are good. When I started education in 2003, 4, as a as a teacher, I felt like kids needed to go to college. I don't feel like that anymore. I feel like kids can do HVAC. They can do – there's right. so many things they can do. Um, yeah, as far as um, educationally speaking, like – you don't have to get a, a psychology degree to go to graduate there's school. So many, and, yeah, so many trades out there that are necessary yeah. for the for society to, to, to function. Well, yeah, and, and the boomers uh, are getting out. The baby boomers are getting out. So there's yeah. we don't have enough. We don't have enough. We need we need more people to enter into that realm. That's, that's to keep America good. industrially the what we are right. No, so everything's that's, not outsourced. Uh, that's correct. Um, you brought up uh, Drew Roberts. Uh, one of the things that I, I, one of the other videos that I watched, I watched a lot of your videos that you shot this last week. Is you love to hike? Tell, love it. Tell us love your, it. Tell, tell us uh, what what's your what's your I don't know. It's, I don't know if it's a fascination, but what is your drive to go and hike and, and venture in the in the outdoors? Okay, so if you come where I'm from, Northwest Ohio, it's a drained swamp. It's called the Black Swamp. <laughs> it's the bottom it's 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 literally the bottom oh, right. of like a swamp right so the dutch and the germans come over in the 1800s they dig these deep ditches that's how they drain the swamp into lake erie okay there's no fall to the land there's no elevation change for like 70 miles from where like the sandusky bay all the way over to the indiana border so there's no elevation it is literally like everyone's like oh kansas is flat nebraska's flat no they're not they have a rolling prairie hill. There's not a rolling prairie hill where my parents live. It's flat. So there's really nothing to do. And I used to walk around. I'd walk all around. I'd walk the block. I ran the block. I w it's flat. And there's like, it's fields. And I would walk in the middle of the field. Or we had a woods. I'd go back in the back 40 of my dad's woods and hang out. Right? So, like, we did that growing up. And then when my best friend moved to the Pacific Northwest, his name's John Watkins. He's a maniac rafter. He's a rogue rafter. No one will raft with him, except for Matt Lindlin, who's nuts. But, um, <laughs> yeah, so I, he, he got out there. We got out there with him, and he was like, he really got me into it. John was like, oh, let's do this. Let's hike. So we climbed St. Helens together. Oh, well, cool. I didn't understand. Like, when you get out there, it's really a daunting task. If you've ever been on the trail, which I know you have, I know Dave Orndorff's a big hiker. He tells me he likes to hike. He likes to hike and climb all around Spokane and, I was like, well, it doesn't look like the hills are that big around there. <laughs> they are. They're, they're bigger yeah. than you think, right? Yeah. So my thing is I just, like, like to get out and, like, see 
the national parks, the national forest, the Bureau of Land, the BLM land that we as Americans own, right? I mean, have you been a fair yeah. amount of places in America? Uh, uh, my son and I, uh, we did Adams. I didn't make it to the top, but he did. And my son just, Yeah, I uh, did just, Adams. Just, I got elevation sickness on Adams. Oh, did you? My, and my well, I got, I got, we were out all night at the bar sickness on <laughs> Adams, but sure, sure, whatever but, I wanted to call it that day. My son just did uh, Mount Rainier, but yeah, we love to, we love to go out and, uh, get up in the mountains it's a it's beautiful you can't it's uh, free you can't beat it. it's free it's america yeah. it's 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 right. everything that epitomizes everything we're about and yeah. I, yeah i mean everything i'm about like i want my kids i i climbed uh, a mountain with my kid on my back we did like my wife and i did like four thousand feet of elevation gain in uh smoky mountains great smoky mountain national park and i carried him cool and oh man it was it was That's a bear but yeah it's tough but like i think getting out and seeing it seeing america my best friend really opened me up to it because we're from toledo ohio area martin ohio genoa oak harbor ohio ottawa county ohio it's as flat as a tabletop flat. and it's just kind of blah where i live now is kind of like little rolling hills in pennsylvania where we're about 40 minutes from the pennsylvania border and it looks like that um near chagrin falls um so yeah i really like topography and mountains and seeing the most beautiful things on the planet and alaska's awesome hawaii hawaii is everything it's the hype and then some love it <laughs> was the coach that just came back bundy coach bundy was yeah. out there for like eight days i was like coach bundy i'm jealous of you right now man he was telling me stories about these apple fritters he was eating on the north shore and yeah if you've been to hawaii it's 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 the hype it's all the hype it's everything and then more what Hawaii. For me, I had a great experience. No, I went watch Oregon. I, I, I went watch Oregon State there. Oregon State, Minnesota, Oklahoma, and American University had a tournament there. I was there and I covered that's, it. That's uh, it awesome. one of the reasons I went to BYU because they had a Christmas tournament in in Hawaii. Uh, this this they, thing, um, they restarted. That's what this was. Oh, cool. This was the restart of it. And it just never caught on. Yeah. Uh, we so went it was to like the Army a... and Utah State went, and uh, there was a California school there, and uh, no, it was it was it was fun. And you get you get to go to Hawaii and wrestle in a tournament, and it was there on the Army base. That's yeah, awesome. So it was that so. Was cool. I, I just back to your original point, though. I don't think that there's a better thing than going out and seeing America and seeing the world and hiking and just to go hiking. And when you're out there, hey, when you're out there, um, if you don't carry a sidearm. You're you're at the <laughs> you're at the mercy of nature. You are. You are at the mercy of nature. It's like think about this. So we did the the we did the Highline Trail and the Red Glacier National Park. My wife and I did the Highline Trail, um, which is awesome. We did the Continental Divide. Hike to that, and I usually have a sidearm on me. They're like, yeah, you don't need a sidearm. Just carry a bear spray. I go, well, what about the wind? Do you run around the, the other side of the bear? <laughs> hey, hold on. This wind's in my face. Let me. Have you ever sprayed bear spray? Have you ever actually sprayed it? I haven't, no. Okay, I, I so it carry. comes out. It doesn't come out like a stream, like right. mace. It comes out like a clout. Oh, okay. If you mess that up. Are you spray it in your face? You got bear. You're, you're, you're putting some seasoning on yourself for the bear to eat you, I think. <laughs> not, and not that you can really kill a bear with a sidearm. Um, you at least got a chance is the way I look at it. But I don't think there's more of a primal thing than going out and hiking and hiking out of a, out of a pack and cooking your own meal and filtering your own water and, or boiling it if you don't have a filter, which will still get you sick. But... Um, I just don't, yeah, I don't, it's the freest thing you can do. A lot of people will never do it, but, the, uh, you know, a hike where you're just out of your pack for four or five days, you find a little bit about yourself. Uh, you? Uh, no, you do. You really do. It's, it's yeah, that's like what the, I love about it. You like, it's like the sport of wrestling. You find out what kind of person you, you are. You really do. And then I, I got to thank my best friend, John Watkins, for that. He's, he really got me into it. And that's he's tried awesome. to kill me on a couple of rafting trips, though. So I, I'll unthank him for that. So, um, I'm going to change subjects for a second. I'm going to t want to talk about something that's really 
I know that you love more than anything in life, and that is your boys. Uh, I, yeah. I, I've, I've, I've now, you've answered the question, where did you get the name of Ferdinand? Because it's uh, your grandpa, your brother, uh, your Great son. Great grandpa. But yeah. uh, where, did, where did Thomas's name come from? My dad's Thomas. Okay. There you go. <laughs> yeah. he, he, why no, he's, you know, I, I, I mean, Ferdinand's, Ferdinand's a very unique name, and that's a, that's a cool, unique name. But, yeah. And, and, and Thomas. And so I was, uh, and I was going to ask you, where did you get the name Ferdinand? But in our, in, in your telling us stories about your family, your grandpa and your brother, that's a, that's a good, rich name for, uh, for your kid to have. And, and so I was wondering where Thomas came from. But that's your dad's, uh, your dad's name. That's so my that's, dad's uh, name. That's so, awesome. Yeah, it's funny. Um, there were, you know, like, uh, my dad's just a brutally honest guy, you know. Um, there was not a lot of sunshine blown to you. He was, <laughs> he was never. He's oh, that's never. Awesome. So listen, I was, uh, him and I were building a shed at my house. I bought a house, like moved uh, out of Kent, Ohio, into the country like, two years ago. And I was building a shed to put all like my lawnmower and stuff in, and it was like, 10 by 12 or something, right? And we're doing the roof and we're doing all this stuff. And I, I drilled into my hand, oh. right? Like we were, we were doing the sheeting for it, like what iron workers have to do. Yeah. And I drilled into my hand and I, my finger was all like bleeding everywhere. And I, like, I'm yelling. I'm like, I'm mad. And uh, I'm like, oh, he, he told and he told me as like a 12, 13 year old, he's like, Boy, you can't do iron work. If you think you're going to do iron work, you're going to starve, and so are your family. You're a slug. Get an education. And, and listen, we don't have a lot of that today, you know, where people are just not shooting other people straight. Right. We're, like, I want you to think about it. There's kids who are in the classes I teach who will go get undergrad degrees, or they'll go and won't get the degree, and they'll leave with, burdened with $150,000, $200,000 in debt. When the yeah. reality is that kid could have gone and got a, they could have got into a trade and got on a permit as a tradesman and been doing HVAC or, or been a, a roofer or, been, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. but my dad just knew that wasn't the route for me. And he was brutally honest about it. So when I drilled into my hand, I screamed. I was like, you were right. I would have started <laughs> if this is what I would have done for a living. <laughs> he started laughing. He thought it was the funniest uh, thing ever. And then we built a deck off off the back of uh we built like a i have this massive deck it is not it's like 50 50 by 50 by 14 oh wow <laughs> you can land a spaceship on it <laughs> and it's funny because the the frame for it was a uh, it was a shipping container for a lathe for uh the jeep factory in toledo oh wow and he brought that to my house and repur we, we repurposed it and it's now the frame of my deck. And then he brought, like, wood that people always drop all their crap off at my dad's. And my dad's been bringing all the stuff home from the job sites for 50-plus years. So my dad's sitting on a lot of scrap and a lot of I-beams and purlins and tubing and piping. And, you know, he, uh, he brought home a thing from the Detroit BP, and he makes fire rings out of it. And it was an oil, it was an oil pipe. And they're three-foot fire rings. Oh sweet! And he just he just he just cut some of the torch, and he he go stencil your name in it and cut it out. And I got a bunch, I have two of those. So he That's does a awesome. lot of repurposing, and he's just yeah, and he, he's a really good craftsman. Check that, he's really uh, functional, sure. not a good craftsman. <laughs> it's functional. <laughs> all my uncles are incredible. My brother Ferd is really good. They're real meticulous, and all my cousins. They're like amazing uh, woodworkers, and they can do a lot of stuff with iron too. They're really good. Like my brother Ferd, Ian's dad, they live in a barn, and they took that that pipe I'm talking about, that same pipe. And my brother Ferd has a spiral staircase that's also his chimney oh, that goes up into the hay mow of his barn. That is so which, cool. Which is the yeah, it's really cool, and it's it's like a probably a thirty foot thing, and he built steps into the side of it. So you do a spiral staircase at Ferd's house, and you're walking on his chimney, up his chimney. I mean, that's who thinks pretty, of that? Who thinks of that, right? It's a really cool that's setup. Cool. and Yeah, they're really good uh, 
but my mind doesn't function like there's a I'm not mechanical like them. <laughs> so, but that's okay, right? Right. So my then, sons, uh, yeah, my sons. When you talk about them, um, I see a lot of uh, whatever my dad and brothers have, right? I see a lot of it in them, but I really see my wife's family in them because my wife's real smart. Her mom's a was a teacher for 35 years. My wife teaches at Solon High School here in Ohio. They're really smart people, like intelligent, whereas we're kind of mouth breathery, <laughs> knuckle dragon, <laughs> gritty. Like they're real, yeah. they're real smart. My sister-in-law, she's real smart. So my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they're really highly intelligent people. And I'm always like, how does this girl even like want to be around me? <laughs> so, so uh, hey. luckily they got more of them, right? And my wife yeah. played volleyball at Kent State and her sister played volleyball or played oh. basketball at Illinois State. So they're both Division One athletes, scholarship cool. athletes and yeah. really good athletes. So hopefully all of it is the brains and the athleticism comes from my wife. For your kids, that's good. Uh, yeah, I hope so. I mean, we'll you, see. You, you tell, you, you, uh, I'm learning more and more about you and that's why I say, Man, we 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 could have been friends for since we were growing up. So this is this is cool. Um, yeah. to get to know you more. Um, you know, you, you uh, and and I don't mean to embarrass you because I think you're a humble guy, but you've done so much for wrestling, uh, covering. Uh, I mean, your your story about uh, uh, your first uh, meeting with Marty. Uh, and the, the the startup of Flow Wrestling, that's a great story. What uh, are you still are you seeing uh, wrestling? I mean, back in 2013 when the Olympics tried to take away wrestling from us, uh, you you did you were a big part of trying to save wrestling. Do you see wrestling where it should be right now, or where where do you think wrestling? Is? I mean, there's there's an influx of girls wrestling programs. Uh, more high, more colleges are uh, like uh, Little, Little Rock has a wrestling program now, and um, what where do you think what, what's the health status? Do you think wrestling is right now? We can always be better, you know that. I mean, you think that, right? Like, I mean, yeah. let's just okay, let's just go right out of the gate here, Jim. BYU doesn't have wrestling. You're not okay no, with they, that? They, they, no, they right? dropped it. Yeah, so we can I, be I'm better. St st right? I'm still bitter, still bitter about yeah. it. Yeah. And, and yeah. Jim, I don't know what I would do if Kent State dropped wrestling. I'd sell all my houses and and move forward. I rent largely to the wrestling team. You know what I mean? It's just like that's what we are. That's who we are. That's who we work with. That's our deal. We 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 take care of each other, right? Yeah. Um. But man, yeah, I've rented to I've rented to thirty plus wrestlers at Kent State. Um, you know, we can always be better. I'd like to be why you should have wrestling. Here, here, they I'll should. give you five I'll give you five programs that have no excuse not to have wrestling. You ready? Yeah. Syracuse. No, right? they should have it. Yeah. Me should mean have Gene, it. upstate New York. Right. right. Toledo. They should have it. Right. That, those are two two no brainers. They got NCAA champions, all time greats. Right? No brainer. Yeah. So Syracuse, Toledo, BYU. I agree. Right? BYU. Okay. And the last two. I mean, the last two that, that should have wrestling, and I'll leave the, I'll leave the, the most obvious one for last. Like, they have, they have no excuse not to have wrestling, the last one. It's infuriating me. I cheer against them every football game I get a chance to, right? <laughs> but um, it, um, number, other four. One that should, number four, um, like a Ball State. Why, come on, what are you doing, Ball State? You're in the Midwest. What are you doing? You're in the MAC. And you, know, you, you should have wrestling, yeah. Yeah, Miami, Miami of Ohio, Ball State. Like, come on, I'll just put those two together. There's they so could duel much, each other. They could so build much. this crazy rivalry. They could do it, right? So much but the, good the, high school wrestling there. Yes, tons yeah. of it, right? They wouldn't even have to go. The, the recruiting budget could be within 50 or 100 miles, right? Yeah. And then the most obvious one that's infuriating every Saturday during college football mm -hmm. is Notre Dame. Notre yeah. Dame is the most obvious one. you got Chicago. You got Toledo, Fort Wayne, Indy. I mean, you're right there. You can go steal kids from Michigan. You can go steal kids from Illinois, kids from Wisconsin, the Chicago land area. I mean, their recruiting base, they're iconic. Think about it. They could do what Stanford and Michigan do. They could recruit from Hawaii. It's such a massive brand. 
I mean, Notre Dame could recruit overseas. They could they could literally do what Stanford. They could, they could do what Stanford and Michigan do. They could have a national recruiting base. They wouldn't even have to go recruit. People would want to go there on family there, legacy. That's right. You yeah. know, good Catholics, right? I mean, it's a no brainer, man. Right? So that you know, okay. So there, let's just say that. You got the Catholic tie there, right? Well, look at the Mormon tie to BYU. Uh, that's right. Right? I mean, no I don't know. Do Mormons live clean? They seem to to me, Jim. I mean, that seems to be a pretty good recipe for the sport of wrestling, doesn't it? Yeah. Right? It Am I wrong? It, it, no, it helps a lot. It really it, helps. Totally, okay. You're, you're totally right. Yeah, I mean, uh, Coach no, Jason, Chamberlain, uh, Jason Chamberlain, uh, right. Coach Sanderson, they do a pretty good job, right? Yeah, As coaches are. now, and it's because those guys are Mormons, right? Yeah. So, uh, I mean. Uh, uh, Joe, Joe Williamson just gave us a number six. Uh, he said Oregon. <laughs> wow, well, I mean, come on. Come on, right? Right. Well, it's just you guys are such so much in trouble out there with the sport of wrestling. I just feel like it's on life support out there. But it I is. will say I got to give a ton of credit to Fresno State. <sighs> you know, this, I, uh, you know, Steiner, Kevin Steiner. was. Steiner and Silva have done a great job. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jason Chamberlain. Back. Yep, yep, yep. Jason's there. Joe Colon. Joe Colon. Uh, yeah, we have a, we have a Moses Lake kid there right now. So uh, Blake yeah. Cavill. Blake Cavill's there. They got all uh, types our, of folks that are doing a heck yeah. of a job. Um, Joey yeah. Valley's there. The Reno yeah. kid. He's well, there. Our, so our, they're... Uh, we have Hunter Cruz from Moses Lake that's at oh, Fresno okay. State. So, He's on he the squad? He registered at his freshman year. He had his shoulder fixed. And, nice. Uh, he, he'll be and back, we'll, though. He'll be back. You'll hear, you'll, no, you'll hear his name. Yeah, okay. He's going to do great things. Awesome. So, awesome. D- dude, I, I, I want to thank you for all you do uh, for the sport. And uh, I want to make sure people know that uh, they should go to your Facebook. Uh, go, uh, go. It's Gohio's Casts. It's on Facebook. Or, or Zeb Miller on Facebook. Uh, follow your YouTube channel at uh, GoHowCast uh, YouTube and uh, get all your content. You have over th- 7,000 videos. You put up. Yeah, I think we're, we're approaching eight. We're approaching eight. Yeah, you do a lot of videos, brother. And, yeah, a lot uh, of it's pretty good content, too. Usually, if you look at it, it's, yeah, it's no, not it's, just it's good. a video of a, of a brick no. wall or something. It's it's real <laughs> real engaging actual content. It's, it is uh, real stuff. I mean, there's some shenanigans on there, but we, we like to have fun, right? We like no, to have a little it, bit of fun. It, it, hey, how about Cammy Roberts? Cammy Roberts took me for a hike. That, I saw that, and that was She cool. tried to it, dust me, though. Tried to leave me in the dust. <laughs> and Drew did leave me in the dust. Yeah, Drew did <laughs> leave me in the dust. But, yeah, man, I, I appreciate you uh, reaching out. And, you know, this is the thing I really appreciate about wrestling. We we take care of each other. We have each other's back, and yeah. we we uh, promote one another. And we, we you know, it's just awesome. I, I, I really enjoy the sport. And, Hopefully my kids, whether they do it or not, will get some some end of that, right? There you go. We're we're defending what we build right there with defense. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Heck yeah, so, man. That's why we help promote each other. But hey, uh, Zeb, this has been so much fun, and uh, I appreciate you and your time. I know you need to get uh, busy mowing that lawn. And yeah. Get back to dad. Get the, I gotta get the rock salt. I've been here at the uh, uh, Heinen's. Gonna get the rock salt. And... <laughs> Gonna so, put the put it in the softener. Awesome. Hey, uh, let's do this again. This was so much fun. There's so much more uh, we can talk about. And uh, uh, you have a great day and uh, spend the weekend with your kids and your wife and enjoy. What's your next uh, What's your next venture? Are you going to Fargo? Nothing. Nothing. Hang out with my kids. But Seriously, you, I have nothing planned the rest of the summer. I've got some graduate classes I'm taking. You, oh, cool. And I'm, I'm going to hang out with my kids. I go on vacation with the Burnett's. Scotty Burnett, they have a, a club called Burnett Trained Wrestling Club. Actually, Drew Roberts spent a week training with them here in Ohio two weeks ago after he was undefeated at Junior Duels. Um, I go on vacation with them, and then um, nothing. School, hang out with my kids. You know, I've been gone for two yeah. weeks on and off and i was at my nephew ian's wedding here in ohio i got to go for that to that for a day and then flew out and saw you guys out there and before that i was out in colorado air force academy i was at the 
Northern Colorado, Mile High Wrestling Club, Rocky Mountain National Park. Yeah, Garden of the Gods. We did the incline out there. So it's been a jam-packed summer already, and we're not a month in. We're literally a month in well, today because school got out June 5th. So. Oh, that's, oh, wow. And it's Nothing. July. I want, I want to hang out with my kids. We that's swam in the good. pool yesterday. Uh, my son, Ferd, hits baseballs. Thomas is starting to hit baseballs. So that's what I want to do. I want to hang out good with my deal. family. That's what I want to do for two months. Well, I hope that that's what happens. And, yeah, uh, I, and my I wife's wish. a saint. Sarah's a saint. My wife, Sarah Miller, she's awesome. She's, she's the put, best. They don't make put, them better. She puts up with a lot. <laughs> she sure does. She's awesome. She's she's an angel. So, well, hey, right, thank Jeff. you for the time, man. No, you hit me back awesome. up, and whenever awesome. you want to talk, we'll talk, all right? Let's do that. You take care, buddy.